How a Hong Kong Millionaire's Bribery Case Exposes China's Corruption Problem in Africa It sounds like a Hollywood movie. A respected Hong Kong financial magnate allegedly planned a clandestine meeting with the president of Chad in the middle of the dusty Sahara Desert, and offers him a $2 million gift to secure oil rights for a Chinese conglomerate. In another scheme, Kai Ping Patrick Ho, according to United States prosecutors, sends the now foreign minister of Uganda, who was then the president of the UN General Assembly, a $500,000 bribe for business advantages, through the New York banking system. All this was allegedly planned under the noses of the world's top diplomats in the corridors of the United Nations in New York, where Ho ran an energy NGO. In November 2017, Ho and Gadio, the Senegalese failed presidential candidate and former foreign minister, who allegedly arranged the deals, were arrested in New York on multiple bribery and money laundering charges. This week, the trial date was set for November 5, 2018. 68 years old and in ailing health, Ho risks spending his remaining years behind bars. He has pleaded not guilty. This case, however, is about more than one man's spectacular fall from grace. It offers a rare window into Chinese corruption in Africa, something academics. Politicians and business people have long suspected existed but found difficult to prove. What's more, with the mountain of evidence seemingly against the defendant, legal experts are wondering whether Ho might be asked to expose other corrupt parties to reduce his sentence. China's competitive advantage Western companies in Africa have long spoken of the competitive advantage Chinese companies have on the continent, says Andrew Spaulding, a professor at the University of Richmond and expert in anti-corruption law. And the dramatic increase in China's commercial presence tends to confirm it. China's goods trade alone with Africa totaled $188 billion in 2015, compared with $53 billion for the US. As China has become the continent's biggest economic partner, Chinese companies have found themselves operating in countries with high corruption ratings without domestic legislation to answer to. 13 sub-Saharan African nations ranked in the bottom 30 of the 2016 Corruption Perceptions Index. If I am an American company and I want to do a deal, particularly in Africa and less developed areas, and I am approaching African officials but losing out because Chinese companies are bribing those officials, I am going to be irked, says Rob Brecht president of New York-based legal think tank Justice Labs. American and British companies have been living with the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, FCPA, and the UK Bribery Act for years. Although China formally adopted a foreign bribery law to comply with the UN Convention Against Corruption in 2011, it has done next to nothing to enforce it, says Spaulding. He adds, the hope is that if Western companies continue to pressure overseas governments to change, that competitive advantage will eventually disappear. Chinese President Xi Jinping's high-profile corruption crackdown at home virtually ignores foreign bribery, according to some observers. 
For centuries, bribery has not even been considered a bad thing in China, says Brecht. But as China becomes a partner in the world community, these issues are going to become more important. Before he became president of the United States, Donald Trump had slammed the FCPA for turning America into the policeman for the world. A foreigner in a different country who merely sends an email relating to corrupt practices through a US server can be prosecuted under the act. Let them clean up their own act, we shouldn't be cleaning up their act for them, he told CNBC in 2012. In November 2017, the U.S. Department of Justice formalized a new anti-corruption policy prioritizing bringing cases against individuals rather than corporations. Heavy fines against companies, it said, only penalized shareholders. U.S. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein cited the conviction of one of the richest men in China, real estate magnate Hang Lap Seng, of bribing UN officials, as an early example of this strategy's success. He thanked the governments of the United Kingdom, Brazil, Austria, Germany, the Netherlands, Singapore, and Turkey for helping the US to enforce this approach during a two-year trial period. China was notably absent from that list. How to bribe an African leader if the emails and reports obtained by the FBI and presented in a court affidavit are to be believed? Ho and Gadio took remarkably few steps to cover their tracks. The pair documented their alleged plan so clearly it reads like a how-to guide for bribing an African official. Jackson Miller, a Washington-based China-Africa expert, says such flagrancy is often a response to the strength of local law enforcement mechanisms. Most of the time, frankly, this much exists all over email because there are no established mechanisms working against that. No local compliance agency, he says. It's crazy the information people leave on Facebook or Twitter even because they think that no one is looking. Ho first approached his old friend Gadio for a favor at the UN in late 2014, according to prosecutors. State-owned energy company China National Petroleum Corporation CNPC, had been fined $1.2 billion by the Chad government for environmental violations, and its oil license there had been revoked. Ho allegedly asked Gadio, a close friend of the president of Chad, to help resolve the issue. Before the fallout, Sefk Energy Company, a global corporation based in Shanghai with ties to the Communist Party, had hoped to embark on a joint venture with CNPC to enter the oil market in Chad. SEFC funded the energy think tank Ho represented at the UN, the China Energy Fund Committee. <laughs>